part one of the Fusion 360 tutorial. So this is designed for 3D printer enthusiasts or people who haven't used any type of modeling software or Fusion 360 before. So it's very basic. We're gonna go slow and primarily hit the points just to get you up and running and start working in Fusion 360. I will admit I am not a professional in Fusion 360 either. So if you have comments, suggestions, tips, or uh, certain questions or things you would like to see in the future, please comment below. But Fusion 360, first off, let's talk about how to get up and running. So on the top left, show data panel, and you will come to a page where it looks like you have recent data, assets, trainings, things of that nature. So I made a new project called Tutorial. I made a new folder just right here called Adam's Tutorial Part 1, and then we are working in that right now. So when I go and save my model, it's going to go into that folder and it works similarly to Windows folders and that way you can organize your work. Now, one thing I would recommend is right here in this white box, the first time that you log in, there's going to be something on the bottom right here that says capture des design history. Now mine says do not capture because I've already selected this, but I strongly encourage you to choose that because on the bottom, as you will see, it will give us a timeline of everything that we have done. This is very handy in case you need to go back a couple steps, or you need to change a dimension, things of that nature. And that's a really easy way to do so. And something that I think you should do in the beginning. So typically when you design in Fusion 360 or 3D modeling in general, a lot of the time you are going to start with a 2D sketch. You're going to create that and then you are going to give it some depth. So that's what we're going to do today. So I have this electron tree, really neat, made in acrylic, a very unique, very cool, but it's somewhat top heavy and it will fall over very easily. And so today I want to make just a couple little bases for it. That way it's not going to fall over as easily. So that's the plan. And that is what we're going to make in this tutorial. Nice and easy, but enough to get you going here in Fusion 360. So first thing we want to do, you see solid surface mesh sheet metal, you see these different tabs, each one has different things in it, and of course they all have their beneficial characteristics to them, but today we're going to start with solid. So the first icon we see is create sketch. So if you choose that, you're going to see three different planes. Now, it doesn't really matter what one you choose because you are going to be faced toward it regardless of what you choose. Typically, I choose this one on the left right against the blue and the red axes. And that puts us right here and we see our little ISO center right there. And we are ready to design our first sketch. So again, up here, we see that we have a sketch tab and we have a bunch of tools available to us. So the first thing I'm thinking is that I'm going to create a rectangle. And when you do this, remember that you can use your mouse to determine the size or what I personally think is easier is if you just type it. So you see a 95 that is highlighted in blue. I can change that to whatever I want. So now I have already measured what I need. I've measured my electron tree cutout and I know what size I need to fit a to fit that into my base. So this is in millimeters. So I want that to be 36. And this is something important to know, especially for beginners as well. I hit enter. So now what that did is it locked this sketch and specifically this particular, I guess, measurement or dimension. I said oh, it's 36. So now it is like that is locked in. That is now 36 millimeters. And, you know, it's not going to change. But say I wanted to change it. 
So there is something in Fusion 360 when you want to tell it what the distance of a certain line or how big something is, they call it sketch dimension. You can get it by using this icon or even if you drop down on this create, this opens up something and you can choose a bunch of options. And down here is also sketch dimension. D is also the shortcut. Regardless, let's go to sketch dimension and let's say, I don't know, I didn't like this 36. I could highlight, you see this turns blue. I could highlight this, come down and it's gonna tell me, hey, you're over constraining the sketch. Now what this means is that you already told it what the dimensions were. So either you're trying to add a dimension that isn't going to fit or you're just trying to change it when you've already locked in what it should be. So I'm going to hit cancel. And if you double click, you can see that's what we saw to begin with. And I could change it. I like my 36, I'm gonna stick with it. So I can go back to sketch dimension and I didn't pretty much tell it what this side, the height was going to be. And that turns out that's going to be two centimeters. So 20. So there we go. Now that we have this, I think it's a good time to show you how to move around here in Fusion 360. So on the top right, we have this cube. That is a good way to move across the coordinate system and pivot to see the different parts of your sketch. You also see that you can highlight different parts of this cube and it will take you to that. So if I want to look at the front, then I just right or click on that front and it's gonna show me directly right there. Also, if you get discombobulated or some settings get jacked up and you're not sure where you're at, there's also a little home button. If you double click it, that is going to take you to the home where you're gonna be able to see your sketch. Now on the bottom part of our screen here, these are some navigation tools as well. So right here we have orbit. So if you click it and you see that our cursor changed to a little orbit and that's going to let me look and just rotate how I want to see it. You can also do look at. So if you look at something and select a plane, you are going to look on FOSS on that plane. Now granted, we only have one, but once you have a 3D model, you can look at any plane. Then you can pan, you can zoom, uh, you can change display settings, you can show the grid. And also note down here, because I have my design hit, capture design history checked, I saw that is the first thing I did. I sketch something. So now as I proceed, I can always come back to here. This cursor is where we are right now. So that shows you the thought process of what you were doing or what someone else was doing. And then again, also allows you to go back if needed. So we have the basis of my base for the electron tree. Next thing I want to do is cut something out that will allow that to fit the electron tree to fit in. So I'm gonna keep it really simple. So I'm going to make a new sketch and I'm going to do it on the same plane. And let's pan, so this is back here. And so I'm gonna do a line. I could also do a rectangle, but I already showed you a rectangle. So let's do a line, that's right here. And I'm going to start Right, so I, again, I've already measured all this. I know that I want this to be five millimeters. And I want it to be five millimeters on the other side too. So I did that and then I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go down one millimeter or, or I'm sorry, one centimeter. And then I'm gonna come over and then up and then I'll finish it off right there. So now I created manually another rectangle. And of course I could have gone to the rectangle tool and done this too, but there you go, you have a line. And so that is, uh, that's good. And we can now start uh, extruding both of these. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. So one, I can say, all right, I'm going to now 
go to create, oop, that is not what I meant to do. I can go to create. I can choose this extrude. So under solid, there is an extrude button. And that is going to allow you to choose the face that you want. And if we go to the top right and we move this over, we can really see what's going to happen. You see a arrow and you can drag this to what, however long that you want. So this is making our 2D sketch into 3D now. Now, granted, uh, we essentially uh, just have a box <laughs> at this point, and that's not going to help me hold my electron tree, but that is soon going to be converted to something that is useful. So there is our box, but now I'm going to grab this smaller rectangle. I'm going to extrude it, and you notice, let me get a little obvious here. So I can pull it out and that's going to join these two things together to make it one piece. And then it's like a box with a, a knob on the front or something. That's not what I want. If you start extruding it toward that other main box, you see red. And that means it is going to cut away from that main box. Over here on our panel, we see operation is cut. You can also do a distance or if you hit all, that means that it's going to cut through everything. So if I do okay, and then there we go. That is what I'm thinking. And that electron tree is gonna sit right in there. And I'm thinking this is gonna be the side when you're looking at it, you'll see. And because of that, and let's do a couple other uh, fancier things, I suppose. So I'm going to select that face and I'm going to uh, first, let's do some fillets actually. So fillets, I like them because they look good. And then they also reduce the, not by very much, but they reduce how much filament it takes to actually print these. So a fillet essentially, if you're unfamiliar, is just going to round off some of the edges. So you can choose the fillet tool right here and then choose whatever edges that you want to apply to a fillet. And then let's say uh, five. Well, okay, that didn't work. Two, mm, Let's try one. So you can kind of preview it, which is nice. And I think that looks good. There we go. So I added some fillets there. That way it's not like completely basic. And I could keep doing that. And there we go. Uh, that's what we got. And you can see that I actually accidentally filleted the entire face. So that's why we were getting a funky when we did five, because I was filleting this entire face rather than just that edge. Sometimes that happens. So let's go to our design history and let's move it before that added fillet. So see, that just showed me what the last step was before I did the fillet. So now let's try this again. Boom and boom, boom. Let's pan this over. And then I have those four selected. Let's try two and let's do one. There we go. See, that looks better. That's more what I was looking for. So that's how the capture history could really help you right there. Perfect. And now let's look at doing uh, maybe one other fancy thing that we can do. So if we select the face, and do a sketch. So you can create a sketch on any face that you want in a 3D environment. So if you go to create, let's add some text. So I want to add, I'm gonna have two of these. So I'm gonna have one say electron and the other one say tree. So there's electron. I certainly need to adjust the height. Let's try five. Nope, way too big. Let's try two, maybe a little too small. 
three. That looks good enough for me. And then, of course, we can choose what we want. Um, I don't know. I'll be based. You know, everyone uses Ariel or Cambria now. I, I always learn Times New Roman. I don't know why it looks better to me. It's what I grew up with. I'm sticking with it. That's how I'm just going to go Times New Roman. That's the way it is. So, all right. I like that. And then I can move this down to be centered. And then boom. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Finish sketch. So now once you finish the sketch, I can't just put it there, right? I need to extrude this out of our 3D model. So now I can move, uh, I'm going to do 0.5 because I'm hoping to print this from ground up. And so if it's too far out, like one, I don't know, one millimeter may not be enough. Who knows? 0.5, I may not even be able to see it. So the, I am happy with this now. So I am ready to 3D print it. So how do you do that? I've got this model. I like it. Think it looks great. First, I'm going to save it. So I'm going to do part one. All right, I save that. Now, if you go to file, there is a 3D print option. That is going to open up your box over here. And you can do print utility, which I use Cura. And I'm going to change this to uh, STL preview mesh. Let's do. Oh, you have to select it. I was like, why isn't that working? It's because you have to select what you want to print. In case you have multiple designs in the same project and you only want to print one of them, that could be a handy feature. So I have to select it, tell Cura, I'm going to hit OK. Now you see it's thinking and it's automatically going to pull up Cura for you, which is pretty convenient. And then you're going to be able to simply... There we go. Now we're in Cura. You're ready to print. That's what it looks like. Exactly what I designed. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's slice it. And then from here, you know what to do. A 25 minutes. So you give me an hour. I'm going to make another one that says tree. Print both of these. And then I'll show you what the final result is. But that is a fast, dirty introduction to Fusion 360. I think the best way to learn is to just dive in and do something. And so I wanted to make something that was very simple, but still useful. You could use this to, I don't know, hold old China or hold trading cards, hold anything. Anything you want to display. Stands are really easy to make. And again, they're very easy for introductory 3D modeling. So if you have any questions, uh, tips, concerns, put it in the drop down or the comments below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.